Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to tackle sections 8.3, which is how to prove that certain quadrilaterals are parallelograms. On the screen, you'll see your exit question for the day. I want to start with what we talked about in the previous lesson, which was a number of things. We talked about what is a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of opposing parallel sides. That was its definition. We said also said that once you have a parallelogram, you have all these properties about it. Opposing sides are equal. Opposing angles are equal. Consecutive interior angles are supplementary, and diagonals bisect each other. Now, each of those five things, these four things plus the definition of a parallelogram, work in both directions. So their converses are also true. And we're going to use all of these converses to prove or to show that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So basically, we're going to take each one of these statements and reverse the order of it. If you can show that it's got two pairs of congruent opposing sides, parallelogram. If you can show that it's got two pairs of opposing congruent angles, it's a parallelogram. Now this one, if you show the converse that consecutive interior angles are supplementary, it is a parallelogram and you can prove it, but it won't be an official theorem for today because we kind of already proved that using the theorems for parallel lines way back when we were dealing with that. 8.6, again, if you can show that the diagonals bisect each other, you have a parallelogram. So let's start off with our theorems for the day. We're going to start off with theorem 8.7, and theorem 8.7 is the converse of theorem 8.3. So basically says that if you have two pairs of opposing congruent sides, that forces it to be a parallelogram. Theorem 8.8 .8 says that if you have two sets of opposing congruent angles. It forces it to be a parallelogram again. Theorem 8.10. Notice I skipped 8.9. I'll get back to that. If you can show that the diagonals bisect each other, you have a parallelogram. Now we're going back to 8.9. 8.9 is a little bit special because it's not the converse of something that we already knew. 8.9 is slightly different in that all you need to show for 8.9 is that you have one pair of opposing congruent sides and that those sides are parallel. This is kind of a unique theorem because we don't have to talk about any angles and we don't have to talk about the other sides. So we can focus in just on two sides of the parallelogram or the hopefully parallelogram that you're trying to prove. Our first example here, figure out what value of X makes CDEF a parallelogram. Well, to do that, you're going to use theorem 8.10, which says that in a parallelogram, or if you have diagonals that bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So if we can make these two diagonals bisect each other, we're in good shape. Now, one of them is marked as being chopped in half. So that has already been bisected. So if we can just show that this segment is the same as that segment, then we have a parallelogram. To do that, simply set them equal to each other and solve. That's simple. The second three examples, three second set of examples that I have for you today is just simply here are a set of quadrilaterals. There is enough information on each one of those to tell that they are a parallelogram. Please tell me which theorem tells you that each of these is a parallelogram. Please pause the video and see if you can reference each theorem. OK, here are the answers. Number two, theorem 8.9 says that if you've got two pairs of opposing sides congruent and parallel, it's a parallelogram. If you have 8.7 says that if you have two pairs of opposing sides congruent in length or equal in length, it's a parallelogram. Uh, number four, you could the official theorem that you could use was theorem 8.8, .8, which is opposing angles are congruent. You could have also used consecutive interior angles are supplementary and then used uh, the definition of a parallelogram. The next example I want to do is this one. And I have a graph of a quadrilateral of some sort, and I'm just going to tell you that that is a parallelogram. 
but I want you to pause the video and think of at least two ways that you could figure out or prove just by calculating with the coordinates that that is indeed a parallelogram. Pause the video and think of at least two ways to do it. Okay, there are actually at least five ways to do this. Uh, we now know many ways to show that things, their quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So part of the difficulty in this section and the previous section is now parallelograms are a very special quadrilateral. They have lots of properties, so you have to keep them all straight and organized. So if you need to show that something is a parallelogram, you've got at least five choices. You can show that the sides are parallel using the definition. To do that over here, you would have to show that each one of these segments is parallel across the way. That means that you'd have to do the slope formula for each pair of opposing sides and show that the slopes are equal. Number two, you could show that the opposing sides are equal in length. To do that, you'd have to do distance formula. You'd have to do it for each segment, so you'd have to do distance formula four times. A lot of work, but you could do it. Number three, you have to show that opposing angles are equal. Now, there's a probably an easier way to do this. The one that comes to mind for me is to split this thing up into right triangles, uh, do the distance formula, and use trigonometry and inverse trig functions to find the angle measurement here. And then, of course, that's only a portion of the angle, so you'd have to draw another right triangle, do trig again, find the angle right there, and so on and so forth use the angle addition postulate and show that the opposing angles are equal. Lots of work, but could be done in theory. Number four, show that one pair of op opposing sides are equal in length and parallel. That's probably the easiest one because all you have to do is show that these two distances are equal and that these two segments are parallel. So you'd have to do a combination of distance formula and slope formula to do that. Number five, you could be very creative here and I think this would definitely be the simplest one if you're quite clever. You want to show that the diagonals bisect each other. In other words, that if I drew this segment in and this segment in, they would intersect at each other's midpoint. So you could actually find the midpoint between A and C without even having drawn the diagonal. And if it's the same as the midpoint from B to E, and it is, then the two diagonals obviously intersect each other at each other's midpoints, which means they bisect each other. That's kind of a clever proof. I like that one. Okay, there is your assignment. I will see you next time.